So I'm going to go back to our to one of the test clients. And I'm going to go to the profile. So the first place I want to show you is the client level reports. And so this is, um, I briefly mentioned it, mentioned it this morning when we were reviewing the client profile screen. And so where you find them is under the printer icon here that says client reports. And when I click on it, these are all reports that are available to run on this client uh, only. And when you're running reports in HMIS, it's pretty easy. You can run or schedule. Schedule means you're going to select all your parameters and then you're going to set the date that you want it to run. Uh, but typically we usually run these in real time. So you click on run and then you want to select your parameters. So um, this client, these are the programs they've been in. So this report is saying, well, of the, of the programs they've been in, which ones do you want to run, run the report on? Uh, you can say, uh, and this is on case notes, either all of them not connected to a spe specific program or connected to a specific program. So let's say not connected, then you select your date range and we'll just say, um, I'm going to go back a year just because I haven't written any notes on this client in a little while, I don't think. And then um, once you select your range, then it's going to ask what is your your report output. And in many cases, you can have web page, PDF, or Excel. If you run it as a web page, and when we get to program level reports, this is, it has most of the reports are aggregate data, meaning it's a total of all the clients within your your report parameters. So if you run it as a web page and you're looking for errors, it'll tell you how many errors you have within your report. Meaning if you're looking at clients enrolled in the last year, how many errors do we have on their name or their social security number? Those reports then, if you run it as a web page, you can drill into the report and it'll take you to the client's record so you can make your edits live instead of having to look up each one and print out your report. Uh, PDF is just it. It's a pretty report. It's going to be in PDF format. And then Excel is just what it is. It's, um, it'll, download it in, it'll download it in Excel for you and you can then um, print it if you want. Uh, if you wanted to um, essentially analyze the data and play with it, you may have to take out some of the formatting because it will look the same as the PDF. So it'll have cells that are um, merged and centered and we'll have pictures in there. So it will have um, a little formatting you'll need to do if you are wanting to analyze your data. So I'm going to go ahead and hit submit just so you can see what happens when you do it. This is a simple report. And what's happening is now we have a report queue manager pop up. At the very top, we have this little thing here. And if I click on that, it'll tell me I have this one report pending. And the system will remember your reports for 24 hours. After that, it resets. So it doesn't save them forever. And if I was to run a case notes report again, but for, for this client, but in a different range, it will override the old one with the most recent. Once it's ready, you'll get a little um, red bubble up here. I'll just sit here and you can click open. And here's my one note, it's blah, blah, blah and it was written on 913 and this is the only note that was written that was not connected to a program enrollment. So this is how it looks when when you run this report. So it is kind of going back to the client level reports. These are all the different ones you have. You have the notes, client history, ID card, profile screen, client appointments, service notes, summary, homeless status timeline, uh, client enrollment details, and then client level system use and length of time homeless report. Um, this is a fairly new report. I'm not as familiar with it. What I would tell you is some helpful reports here are probably going to be your client summary, your homeless status timeline, and client enrollment details. Uh, just to kind of show you what I have here in the PowerPoint is a, a very brief description of what the report is and how you might, um, you know, which can help you figure out if it's 
a report you want to to run or if you need information on it. Um, I do recommend that once you're in HMIS to run some of these reports, play with them, see what information is helpful and um, what may not be helpful for you. So I'll be sure to include the PowerPoint in the email tonight with the, um, the links for um, the certification quiz. The next section I want to show you is the report library. And where that's at is up here on your global taskbar. And we're going back to the launch pad, which is the nine dot box up here. We're going to click on reports. And um, some of you will have all three options. Some of you will only have one or two options. The one option that everybody has is the report library. And so if you ever hear someone talking about canned reports, that's all of these reports. And what a canned report is, is it is a report that comes pre-packaged with the software that we purchased from BitFocus, our vendor. So when you're in here, even you're in the report library, these are all normal standard pre-built reports that come with the, the, with the software. You can go to admin reports um, and you'll have the housing inventory count and annual performance report. Um, the inventory count is for housing projects. Annual performance report is something you can run on all projects. It gives you um, good annual data on your program of how many folks were served, what were their general um, demographics. It'll talk about some of their outcomes. Then you have agency management. And what we have here is user activity report. So what I tell folks is if you are um, working in HMIS on a Saturday at three o'clock in the morning and you are not an overnight emergency worker, so therefore you shouldn't be working in HMIS at three o'clock in the morning, your supervisor and even your colleagues could find this out if they run this report. You also have user active caseload. This will, um, for any active HMIS user in your agency, you can run a caseload report to get, uh, just like the caseload we saw up here. And then we have staff client data activity report. This will, um, this report will tell you what each staff person has done with each client, um, whether it was a created a profile, edited a profile, created an assessment, created a service or edited a service. Uh, on the services, it won't tell you which service it was. It just says that a service was provided, uh, created or edited. Uh, user client note hours. Um, what I can tell you is this is pretty brand new. Um, I don't think this has been here for less than a month. So our vendor is always updating these reports for new things. We also then have assessment based reports. So this is really good for if you're running um, reports on the assessments like the BI SPDAT and you want to run a report for um, all the assessments that your agency conducted on individuals in a range and how were those questions answered for each person. That's what this will tell you. We also have community queue and referral reports. So for um, Yolo County folks, running the coordinated entry compliance report is important. That way you know if the, your folks that you're working with are on the community queue or not. This is a good report to run. Then we have data quality reports. Um, these two are also new. I have not seen these, um, so I think this was added this week. This report here, Duplicate Clients, this is really great for if someone managed to enroll a client in your program um, twice. Where this happens is if there were duplicate records and on each record they had an enrollment and that piece was not caught, or if someone edited dates on a program enrollment and therefore creates two different enrollments, um, this is a good thing to have so we can correct those errors. Then we have um, housing reports, HUD reports, program-based reports, and service-based reports. You can see there are quite a few. Um, some reports I recommend uh, getting familiar with would be the HUD-based reports. The good ones are um, the HMIS data quality report and the annual performance report. And if you're an ESG project, then the ESG is very similar to uh, the APR. And then for the program-based reports, 
uh, what you want to, uh, I recommend checking out would be the program roster. This is something I recommend all pro programs run every month to review to make sure that the folks that are enrolled are still supposed to be enrolled. And if you have any folks that are actually in your program, but it's been missed enrolling them in HMIS, this is a good one to, to run. The program details reports is a report that um, it gives you all the answers that they answered on enrollment screens, uh, status assessment screens, annual assessment screens, and exit screens. So if you're looking at um, aggregating some data regarding your clients and how they answered specific questions, this is a good report. And program outcome measures and programs monitoring and client demographics. These are all really good reports. It's not that the, these other ones are bad reports, it's just these are some of the common ones that I've seen across multiple projects being very helpful. And so you can see in my um, PowerPoint, I have a list of the reports, but not necessarily the description with all of them. This has been a work in progress. So um, again, I recommend checking reports out when you've got time because you never know what will be the most helpful. And um, keep an eye out for when we add um, videos on reports. We'll be sending out um, email announcements for those things, and I'm sure we'll have links on the sidebar in HMIS.